Howdy there guys, a G-Man from Texas here. I want to make a video on setting my Hummingbird uh, Helix 7. I know there are a lot of videos out there showing you what settings to put on and stuff. I'm not going to tell you what settings are best for you. I'm going to show you how to navigate the actual machine, at least how I do it. And um, my, hopefully you'll be helpful to somebody. And I, hear, I got the Helix 7. So if you're interested, follow along. All right, guys, first things first. Um, if you want to know if your unit's working properly, if you have your transducer connected okay, before you do any settings, anything, you should uh, check out this little page. It's, it's like, a, like a diagnostic. What you do is when you boot up, the machine as soon as it boots up you hit the menu button and you're going to get this uh, this special menu I right, press there and <clears throat> here we go so you go down to system status this is going to tell you the status of your machine see it says self-test passed it's got your serial number it's got your model helix 7 chirp uh, software version okay um, all this other stuff uh, if you hit the view, uh, you get a second page, okay? If you want to know if your transducer is working, look at the temperature. If it says connected, you've got, you've got power. Um, now, I can see here that GPS is not connected. Now, it could be two things. It could be that I don't have a signal, uh, getting a signal because, see, I'm here under a metal roof. Or it could be that in this particular status, it's not going to see the GPS. And I say that because I know that in this status, in this page, you cannot do any settings. Now, this is like a dealer setup page, right? So you cannot do any settings. You can't put any settings on it when you are in this stage. So you actually, you actually have to turn off the unit and turn it back on to be able to do settings and stuff to work on it. Now this time I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go to simulation mode. Obviously I'm not in the water so I'm going to go to simulation. Now the generation 1, 2 and 3 on the Helix, whatever you do on simulation mode, the settings that you set will stay when you go to the real mode. Now if you have a generation 4 it's not going to do that. But 1, 2 and 3 will. So we'll go to simulator. Okay, press exit to continue. And we're now in simulation mode and we can start doing some of our settings okay so just food for thought guys okay so now we're in simulation mode so we hit menu twice you get to the main menu all right so we are set up so here you can set up uh, you know, the English language uh, you know unit of measurement which is feet here in the US miles per hour instead of kilometers stuff like that now user mode usually comes in angular i would suggest that you change it to custom that gives you a lot more choices more settings that you can tweak okay so go ahead and put it on custom then yeah, you can go around you can go down everything that you know that you can want to do and set up format your directories restore factory defaults Digital readouts, when you put an overlay, you get those numbers there on the left. And what, you know, your miles per hour, your depth, your water temperature, that's your overlay. If you want it, you, you, you just put overlay on digital readout. Now, on the depth offset, okay. Let's say you're using a car like me. I, I have the Lake Master, or you're using avionics, and it paints your lake. And, you know, but let's say the lake is down three, four feet. So you could go down on the lake and the def offset those three, four feet, and it redraws your whole map on that card. Okay, so now I'll press exit, go to my next menu. I want to do chart. Hummingbird chart. Okay. I bought the Lake Master card. Um, lake Master is made by Hummingbird. So if I put this setting on auto, auto chart, it's going to pick up my Lake Master card. If you have a Navionics, then you just 
go to avionics on this menu. Uh, that's going to draw the map of the lake that you want, uh, you know, etc. etc. So just by having the auto chart check mark on, is it'll pick up the Lake Master if you have a Lake Master card, or it'll pick up whatever whatever Helix brings as a mapping program. Now let's go down to shallow water highlight. So I checked that off. That I can set an amount of feet, a depth, that it's gonna show a different color on my on my graph, on my chart. So I have a bass tracker, it's a small boat, it's got a small draft. But let's say I set five feet. On my chart, on my map, whatever I go five feet or below, I'm gonna see a different color. So I'll know that I'm getting too shallow. Okay, so now I go down this highlight one. What does that do? All right, if I check on highlight one, it's gonna give me, uh, I, I can go ahead and program an area of water. Let's say you know that in a specific area, there's good fishing between eight and 14 feet. So once I check out highlight one, I'm gonna set my minimum down to eight feet. And then I'm gonna check my, uh, my highlight maximum to 14 feet. That means when you're looking at the map on your chart, anything between eight and 14 feet is gonna be a different color. So if you wanna fish on that depth, you just fish on that color. Okay, so next menu. Let's go to, let's see navigation all right uh, sonar let's go to sonar in sonar you can see your transducer right, see mine's mega chirp that's that's my transducer right there surface clutter you're going to have to adjust according to the lake and the kind of water that you that you see uh 2d switch fire what is 2d switch fire um on max mode you're going to get every detail that you see on your on your fish finder and on uh, clear mode you're only going to see the strongest returns like fish and maybe structure so it depends how you like to fish I have mine on max mode fish alarm I keep it off otherwise it's beeping all day long with some false beeps i will say that you got fish everywhere but you really don't and so these are other settings. This is where you go to do all these other settings. Depth lines, I keep them on. It tells me the different depth that, I am, that I'm at. Noise filters, it depends. Uh, if you get a lot of, a lot of noise on, on the screen, you'll have, to, you'll have to adjust that according to your water. Max depth, I leave it on automatic. Um, if you know that you your lake only has 40 feet, you could set that to 40. And then of course, salt water, fresh water, mine some fresh water. Um, and then the connected transducer is showing my transducer, which is the Mega SI 150. And that's what you get on this page. Okay, so we exit out of there and then we'll do menu twice again. And uh, this time, let's go to alarms. Uh, first one is the depth alarm. So let's say I want an alarm to let me know that I'm too shallow So I can set the alarm to five feet So whenever I get five feet or below I'm gonna get an alarm It's gonna show up on the on the machine here, and I know that I'm, too, I'm getting too shallow Fish alarm I leave that off otherwise it beeps all the time uh, Low battery alarm Let's say you want to set that. Let's say you want to set that at 11 volts. So if your battery gets down to 11 volts or below, you'll get an alarm. And if you want, you can turn off your engine and the alternator will recharge your battery or whatever, but at least you'll know you're running low. Temperature alarm, off course alarm, I keep that all off. Arrival alarm, so if you arrive to a waypoint, I, I take that off. Uh, drift alarm I'll keep that off that's if you're drifting away from the path when you when you set a waypoint you got to go to waypoint and then of course the tone your medium tone or high tone however you want the alarm to sound and that's it for this page 
All right, menu twice, and let's go now to chart right here in chart. Here in chart, uh, orientation. Um, you, it usually comes in north up. I changed that. I changed that because north up is going to always point north, no matter the direction of your bow. But if you put it on course up, it works like your like your car GPS. Wherever direction you're going, your boat will be facing that that way. Uh, straight up. So that's the way I like to do it. Like, that's that's like a, on, like the car GPS. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, that whatever you you have your course up, you, you turn on the north indicator. I mean, even if your boat's going one way, if north is facing another way, that this little icon here will be facing north. So even though your boat's going, let's say straight up, you'll still know when where north is by by having this north up indicator another feature here in chart is your lake list since i have the lake master card i have uh, several lakes uh, now i like to fish lake fork for example so i'm going to look for for lake fork and even in simulator no mode it'll show me the lake um, of course wherever wherever you go the, the hummingbird is going to draw the lake where you're at but I mean, you can pick Lake Fork, especially for a simulator. So click there and there it is, there's Lake Fork. And, and this is what I meant when you highlighted the different depth and I told you about the different colors. So you can, you can see here in the map on Lake Fork, see on, on red, I have everything below five feet, right? And then we had chosen from eight to 14, a fishing um, spot, so here's a green. So if you want to fish between 8 and 14 feet, you stay on the green. The rest is just all a different color. So that's when the highlight, that's where the highlights come in handy. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I use it all the time. Okay, so this hummingbird has a lot of different views that you can choose from. Down scan. Uh, side scan, graft, uh, you know, sonar, and so you have to press that button, the view button, a million times to go, go around and go back to your same view. Now, I'm going to show you a way. I mean, some of the more advanced units have these, right over here, they have these buttons that you can preset particular views, but in this one, I have to keep on hitting, hitting the thumb. So I'm going to show you how to hide some of the views that you don't use, well, at least that I don't use, right? So menu twice, go to views. Now let's say 2D view. I like 2D view, so I leave it visible, right? That's my 2D. Uh, big digits, you might want yes or no. Down, down image, yes. Visible. Side image, yes. Now 360, I don't use, so I'm going to make it, I'm going to hide it. Now it's a combination of side view and down view. Yeah, sure. I'll leave that visible. Uh, uh, 360, I don't need. I'm going to hide. 2D zoom, I'm going to hide that. SI on one side and SI, the same thing on the other side? No, what for? Chart view, yes, it'll be visible. Instrument view, nah, I'm going to hide that. Bird's eye view, now nah, hide that. Chart and chart, no, I'm going to hide that. I don't want to chart on both sides, so I'm going to hide that. Uh, chart and sonar combo, sure, I want that, so I'll leave it visible. I'll have the chart on one side and the sonar on the other side. That's cool. All right, so we keep going. Uh, chart and down, uh, yeah, why not? I'll have, the, I'll have the down imaging on one side and the chart on the other side. Uh, chart and SI combo, sure, I'll leave that too. Chart on one side, side scan on the other side. So we're going to leave that visible. 3D, no. 360 no chart radar no we're gonna hide that and we know radar uh chart sonar and the eye three things in the same screen no i want to hide that that's too clutter too much clutter chart sonar nsi combo too much clutter we're gonna hide that too so you see i i hit all the ones that i don't need so now i don't have to press the button so many times to to go around and, and look at the ones that i use so now you see, now uh, there's my down, my fish finder, here's my down scan, and here's my side scan, oh, it's coming up now, but you know what I mean, you, you get what I mean, here's my side scan coming down, 
uh, press a button again now I have my combo I have my fish finder on the left and then I got my size scan on the right and so I'll press my button again there's my chart my map press again now I have my map on one side and I have my fish finder on the other side the down imaging and the chart together and uh, the the side scan and the chart together I'm back to my to my fish finder see uh, six charts there and I don't have to go through a million of them to find what I need okay so now uh, pressing the menu only once instead of twice will give you a menu for whatever picture is on your screen whatever page is on your screen so right here I have my fish finder my sonar I press menu once and I get settings for that particular page like for example your sensitivity I can lower the sensitivity or higher the sensitivity and of course I can't tell you what the setting is going to be good for you yeah, it's depending on the water and the condition how you see it so you can you know uh, you get a con same thing with the contrast more contrast less contrast upper range I, I don't mess with that lower range if you put that on auto look, you'll see how it changes it the, the definer knows exactly what your range is where you're at so there you go so I leave it an automatic that's my preference chart speed okay that's a speed that this is scrolling right so rule of thumb you want to have the chart speed at the same speed that you're traveling uh, when you're trolling when you're drifting when you're you know slowly moving your your trolling motor on the bank so it, so that the chart speed will mimic what your boat is doing right so like I said uh, okay colors uh, you can change the colors here for this particular screen only so different colors where your preference is dark or not you know white background this is the one I like so that's how you handle the single button menu on any screen so if I was to change the page now you know let's say let's go to down image it didn't affect the down image so now I'll press menu once and I'll get a set of settings for this particular page you, know, you can adjust again your 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 sensitivity enhance it whatever for this particular page and that's how you work you know that menu on each particular page and the settings gonna be up to you however you like them according to your condition and guys that's basically how I how you set up the unit uh, the actual numbers or in colors and it's up to you in the way you fish but I mean, i'm showing you how to get to those to those menus and, and how they react how they interact with you it's a great the helix is a great unit i love it uh it's very clear i mean i don't have a live scope you know it's three thousand dollars that i don't i can't spend on that i'm retired but this is pretty good believe me it's, it's it gives you a really good image so hopefully, uh, hopefully I help somebody. I know there's a lot of experts out there. I am by no means an expert. I've learned by trial and error and making many mistakes. But if you like the video and you want to like it, even if you want to subscribe, man, that made my day. Guys, thank you for watching. And G-Man from Texas always saying, peace, y'all.